Okay, hello, um, I'm Chakrit. So, uh, just a quick show of hands, how many of you work with uh, Docker files on a daily basis? Okay, uh, I hope you find this talk useful because uh, it's gonna help lessen your pain a lot. <laughs> uh, so before we get started with uh, what Dagger is, uh, so my talk is gonna be uh, programmable Docker with Dagger. Uh, before we get started, let me do a quick introduction uh, for anybody who uh, doesn't know me. So I'm running a Prodigy 9, the software company. I've been writing code for 30 plus years, and I'm now running a ton of uh, four or five uh, software engineering teams. And uh, you can imagine that uh, across all of them, the same thing happens. Uh, we need Docker files. We need to deploy a lot of software quickly. Uh, we we have like multiple Kubernetes cluster to deal with, so I that's why I find this tool uh, really really useful. On on a side note, I also uh, so if if you want to know about me and the company, you can uh, visit my website or the company website over there. Also, we are running a little shop uh, to sell shirts. Just a quick shameless plug here, and I have with me uh, one Python shirt. Uh, for uh, the first person to ask a legit Decker question to me. So come find me after, and I'll give you the shirt. We also have other designs. So uh, just to not waste your time, let's get into the thick of it. Uh, the, most, most of my talk will be uh, just showing you the code and actually running it live. Uh, and the code is online on GitHub here if you want to follow along. and. Uh, Fortunately, Gitpod also works, so you can go use my repository and uh, open it up on Gitpod, and uh, we, we can run it. I just test it, and it works. So uh, before we get started, let me uh, give you the, all the materials that is needed if uh, you're interested in Dagger and uh, looking to implement them. And the first one is the documentation, which you can find on the website directly. They have, uh, you go to the, sorry. So this is the website, CICD as code. You go to documents, and uh, the SDK documents are here. Uh, Python is here, and you can, the reference is like pretty uh, comprehensive. So you can go, like all the class method and modules are properly like documented. Client and uh, container. See, everything is like properly uh, Python docs. Crap. Okay, and also they have a Discord server. So if you have questions, like the community is really, really helpful. Uh, you can go to their Discord here, and there's a channel called Help where uh, people are posting questions. And of course, like Python, Go, like whatever, like floats your boat. And uh, the the core maintainer and like there are community managers here who will come in and like actually answer questions uh, themselves. So uh, it's pretty. Uh, the community has been pretty helpful to me. That's how I got it started pretty quickly. So just just a quick uh, overview of how how Decker works. So Decker itself, when when you use it, you are just using the SDK, right? Uh, but what happens underneath is that uh, it needs a container runtime. So uh, most famously, of course, Docker. If you have Docker running on your machine, uh, you install the Python SDK, it will spin up the Docker engine by itself uh, automatically. Uh, so you don't have to do anything. Just install the Python SDK and uh, get going. Uh, so, uh, so now comes the the important part, so why Dagger? Why, why do we need uh, Dagger? Uh, why, why bother with yet another tool? Uh, which I hope uh, the demo I, I bring today will, will uh, help convince you. Uh, so, uh, sorry, I got a little meme here. Uh, so instead of Docker files, oops, sorry, wrong slides. Uh, instead of Docker files, uh, we, we can be writing Python uh, with, with Docker. Uh, so let's, let's jump in the code directly. Oops. Uh, it, it looks like the, the screen is a little too, too big. So let me. Uh, OK, can you guys uh, read the code? This works for you? OK. OK, uh, I have, I have uh, four examples here. 
actually five. Uh, but one of them is not uh, fully functioning yet, so I'm going to skip that. So the first one is basically how to get started with Dagger. Uh, what you do with, with, uh, to get started using the Python SDK, you basically do a pip install Dagger I.O. That, that's actually all you need to actually know, but uh, you also need Docker, but most people should have Docker running on their machine already. So you just install the library and start coding. And uh, right away, uh, what you need to do is you need to first make a connection to the Dagger engine. The first line here is to uh, build the configuration. You can set timeouts, uh, set where the logs would go, and then you make the connection to the Dagger engine. Once you made it, you can start making containers just like with Docker files. But instead, this time, uh, it goes into a variable in your code, so you can manipulate it as you want, uh, which I will show in later examples. But for now, uh, just to get started, you can pull, pull down Alpine and then do a simple hello here. Uh, with this container, uh, we can call uh, this method standard output to actually execute it all within Python. We, we're not leaving Python code yet. And then get the result out here. Okay. So with just this, we can, uh, let me try running it for you. For two year one Python. So you see, uh, it, it first it start connecting to the engine. If you check your Docker PS here, you see that uh, they're running the engine for you uh, automatically. You don't need to pull anything. You just need the library. So here we, we have echo hello, and then uh, we get the word hello back out uh, as if we run the whole thing through Docker. Uh -huh. But we haven't touched any Docker commands yet. This is all a single Python file. Uh -huh. uh, this may be a little trivial for you, so let me uh, jump to another example. Uh -huh. OK. Uh, let, me, let me zoom it. For, for this one, I'm doing a little uh, thing where this is a Python script that prints a Christmas tree. So I'm downloading that script inside a container and running it. So you, you can see here that uh, the URL here is actually a Python variable. And I'm putting this variable directly inside uh, of running code in the container, which is actually the, the first instance where that's, that's not trivial to do in Docker files. If you want to do the same thing, it, it somehow gets a bit more complicated. You need tail scripts, you need templating, or you need to use build arguments, which is like already a few, a few more like scripts than we need. And this is still a single Python file. So let me try running it. Okay, I, I had it ran before, so uh, most, most of them are cached. But if you are running on your machine now, it might need to download a few things now. Okay, let me show you. Here, I got my Christmas tree out from the container. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so uh, let's see the next one. So this, this is also the... Uh, uh, a trivia version of like a program that prints itself, but using Dagger. So I'm using Dagger to uh, not only build containers, but connect to the host machine as well. Here I have the extra line client.host, which basically means to, to use the host environment as another container, and all the APIs work as if you're working with two containers. Here I'm taking the file, which is uh, using this macro means itself, right? The, the, the script that's running and put its own script into the container and print it out. Uh -huh. so. so here we are, we got the code out from the container. Uh -huh. Okay, the next one, uh, now, now these are all a bit trivial. So uh, uh, if, if you have any questions, like feel free to interrupt me or like uh, catch me after, uh -huh. because this is gonna be uh, it, it's a bit hard to understand for me as well when I first started out. I had to like code it for like a month or two to understand like what actually is the power of like making Docker programmable. Uh, the, next, the next one will be a bit more complicated, so I will take a bit of time to uh, walk you through the code first. So before I, before I start, I have uh, initialized a new uh, Django app here. 
called Django. Here with the managed Py script that we are all uh, familiar with. And here, uh, what I'm doing is that uh, I'm connecting to Dagger normally, but I also take in the, the Django directly from the host, uh, put it in, uh, I create a new Python, uh, Python container, instant Django, and in here I run the migration script. And now after migrate, uh, without changing any settings, uh, you get a SQLite installation. So here I had this little code on the below where I take the file out from the container, the SQLite file, just, just this file and not the whole volume, and take it out and export it here. So basically what I'm doing is that I ran the migration inside the container and take out the output to the host. And uh, to, to, like, to remind you again, this is a single Python file. No external scripts, nothing, just Docker and Python. Uh, I'm gonna do an LS here with the, the DB files here, DB SQLite tree, so I'm gonna remove it. Oh, uh, <laughs> wrong folder. Okay. Okay, now it's gone, and now I'm gonna run the script. Uh, you can see here it does a, a file export out from the container back to the host. Uh, if I do an LS here, I should see the SQLite file here, like all migrated and ready to go. And this is done with uh, with just like less than 30 lines of Python. Okay, now uh, now just uh, because I only have half a minute, so this one I'm gonna try to pack as many things uh, that I can think of uh, that might be in your build pipeline into this script as much as possible. So uh, please stick with me a little as uh, the code is quite long. First here I am trying to make a CI uh, script using Dagger. Uh, and actually to, to remind you again, just to, it, it bears repeating that this is a single Python file, nothing else outside of here, no external shell script. I'm connecting to etcd client to get my settings. For example, uh, to push image to Docker or uh, get a password for the database, I store them on etcd. So uh, it's secure there and not accessible by other developers, for example. And then I make a little method to get uh, a config from this, this node on etcd. Now I'm using uh, keel, keel.sh, which uh, is basically a uh, a uh, gating system for like when you publish new Docker image, it would does the rollout automatically. But you can also make it so that uh, it waits for a HTTP call before doing that. Okay. So I'm adding a code here to make a post to kill to like confirm the rollout of my new Docker image. Okay. Now the other method I have is to publish it. Okay. Here I'm taking the client, which is the Dagger connection earlier, and the image, which is uh, the, the container in a variable that I showed you earlier. I get the config dynamically from etcd. I don't need to do Docker login outside or like leave Docker config anywhere in the system. I just get it live, put it in the, put the secret into the image and do uh, with registry art here and do a publish which will basically uh, logs in to the container registry uh, in real time and upload it, upload the image without uh, anything on this. Now here I also have another feature of Dagger. Uh, you can also not just build containers, but run them as a service as well. So you can pull Postgres here, and I'm using the getconfig method, which basically will simulate uh, the real production database so it uses the same database name, same username, same password, pull it down and uh, run it as a service here with expose pod, which I will use for testing later. Okay, so this is like uh, one method to add a Postgres service. And now to, to the gist of the build script, I have this called uh, Jungress container. And uh, I, I have initialized another uh, Django app here with like proper testing with Postgres, with allowed host, everything up here. Uh, okay. So here I'm connecting to the host as usual, and then I start with a Python container. I add that stuff with uh, build-based Postgres and everything, 
and then I have this extra line, which basically binds Postgres, which is in, in the other container here that I just built, binds it into the new container as a service named Postgres. And now I have uh, the environment variable set up here, which part of them uh, I'm getting from etcd as well. And uh, this is a base image I'm going to use for also uh, putting on production and testing. Uh, but since it's all Python script in a variable, I don't need to create another Docker file. I'll just take the variable and create a migration test, like forking, forking the existing container, and make one with, uh, where I override the database configuration and then run migration and test. And then here, I actually call the standard output just like before to have the container actually run and produce the output. Now, if the migration or test exits it with a non-zero exit code, it would raise the query error here. And then I would trap, be able to trap, the, trap a bad image before going live by running tests inside the container using the exact same image that would go into production. And now, once the test is part, I take the whole, the previous like, variable, right, which, which I built as a base image. I add an entry point script here, and then I just like, pack it together as a working container with, a, with something to start and a port. Now to wrap it together, I have a main here, with, uh, which is, again, just a Python code. Uh, makes the Docker connection, start Postgres service, uh, builds the Jungress container, uh, giving them the Postgres service so it can test. And then once done, I just uh, publish the image. And once the image is completely published, I make a little HTTP call to kill to roll it out. And uh, just to, uh, like it bears repeating again, this is uh, 120 lines of Python with nothing else. No more, uh, imagine, you, imagine doing this, like all of this with just Docker file, you would need, uh, for example, uh, maybe one or two Docker files, some enterprise scripts, you would need an extra Python script to like connect with etcd and download stuff and templates, right? So uh, unfortunately, I think this, this one doesn't fully work yet. I'll, I'll show you a, a working, working compose, uh, working uh, setup later if you're interested. Okay, so that, that's the power of Decker so far. Now, uh, let me get back to the slides. Okay, so I imagine, uh, I, I believe some of you may have a, a folder structure like this in your code where like a bunch of Docker file for different environments, <laughs> scripts, and like different config station. All of this can be completely eliminated if uh, you fully use the power of Decker. It just becomes this one single Python script. I mean, you, you don't have to do this, but just, just to show the power of it, you can do it. And also, uh, I, ha I have other examples, like real-world production example that I'm going to show you, which should uh, highlight a bit more of the, the Decker platform for you. Let me, let me jump to another project. Okay, okay so here, uh, as you can see, we have uh, build.py. But uh, unfortunately, this one uh, predates Dagger, so we still have some Docker file in here. Uh, but no fear, so uh, we can still work with Docker file in here as well. Here, this, this build, buildpy, we have a platform uh, defined, which makes it uh, automatically kind of like switch between Intel and uh, Apple Silicon. And I have the modules here defined. And uh, the the various, we're using a mono repo setup, so the little service inside are like have their own little methods here for building. So the back end has its own back end builds, uh, front end has its own front end build. And here we have one uh, argument which is a public API URL, which actually changes depending on the environment you are deploying to. And uh, to do this regularly, we need to use Docker build arc, which means uh, we need some shell script. Uh, shell script me mechani mechanism in, to, in order to inject this into the build pipeline. But here, since it's just, uh, it's just Python code, and we make a convention to base the, UI, base the tag on the, on the actual domain we're deploying. So we can just create it on the fly here, uh, just using the tag, API tag, and uh, embed that as the build argument. 
ครับ and then build and then use the Docker file with the build argument to build it. So and we also have another one which is like uh, which is a little component that uh, imports location data. We're using Dexter here, so it's another one. Now uh, on the actual building, we we have a little uh, script that does a pass or like check the modules where you can build specific module uh, one at a time, and uh, this one will get. Uh, we'll make it get the registry username and password from, from the environment. So you don't need Docker login before you start this. Afterward, uh, we have an export as well where uh, it exports the container image to a Docker compatible format in order uh, in case anybody want to test. And below here is another power of Docker. Since, since it's just Python code, we can actually uh, if you are not building a single module and you want to build the entire project, you can actually use uh, NEIO task group, which is basically running multiple async method in parallel and build. Uh, here I'm doing uh, the arguments is from the modules. I have three modules, right? So here I'm just adding one, one module at a time to the, to the build group here and like build all three modules in parallel without any shell scripting. Just, just to remind you again, this is like all inside Python with not, not, not much external file. Okay, so, so that's forward inside, uh, which uh, we're using a quick uh, build.py to, to inject a CI CD like into the, into the project. And all, on the actual CI server, we just run the same thing, the developers run, we just run this script. It does the same thing, just change the environment and we get a different image. So, uh, okay. So another thing that uh, I would like to show you is that uh, you can actually use this to build your own developer platform at your company, right? Uh, let me let me show you a quick one uh, where we are using at Prodigy Nine. This will sorry it is is in Go, but uh, I believe you can build the same thing in Python because uh, as I said, the the SDK is just a tin wrapper on the on the Docker Engine API. So I have, I have here uh, a Go program with, with built-in builders that build Go and PNPM. Uh -huh. And what I, what I can do is that I can go into another project, for example, here. I already have it, uh, but let me remove them. I can use my tool to, uh, with, with a fresh new project, I can use my tool to bootstrap. It's going to ask me a bit of a question, like when you initialize things. Uh, uh, PyCon. Now, now it wrote some platform file. I can just start building immediately. Uh, it automatically detects that I'm in a Go environment, and it has a Go build script built in directly into the into the platform binary. Uh, so it doesn't need any extra Docker file, and we can actually standardize this across the the company by using this tool. So everybody now build the same way, set everything the same way. It's like it's just happy. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, this one uh, takes takes a bit of time to build, so I, I had a very really low timeout set to to make sure everybody have fast builds. Okay, so uh, because because now it's just code, right? Uh, that means you can also make a library of like stuff you want to do with containers, like or some tricks and or some hacks that you did with your Docker files. You can write a Python library and put and publish it on pip on whatever. And in fact, Docker itself, the Docker engine have extension system available for this, where you can check out on Dockerverse. Uh, if you go on Dockerverse, uh, which is here, uh, it basically acts like a package for your Docker engine. Uh, if you, for example, you are writing Python and suddenly you need something like Rust, for example, you can just check out this Rust package put it in your, your Docker engine and get to Rust building directly without having to actually understand or invest your time in like, you know, getting all the Rust to chain build correctly, for example. Okay, uh, so uh, I, I hope with, with this talk you, you get to try out some uh, Docker goodness and then uh, maybe you use it to build a platform at the company you work with and uh, reduce the number of files that you use. So thank you. That's, that's actually all from me. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm a little.
เร็วไปนิดนึงอยู่ฮัฟเฟนนี่ค e สชั่นแอนนี่วันฮัฟเฟนนี่ค e สชั่นโอเค Yeah, it's the d a c k e r is quite interesting. <laughs> yeah, powerful. Thank you. Uh, I have a few questions. The first thing first, uh, does the d a c k e r compatible with uh, for the framework? I mean, uh, it's compatible with uh, many Python framework, right? Such as uh, Fast API. Uh, yes, it's just a library that you can call. So you can, for example, make a Make an API using Fast API that would download the code and build container in the background. Yes, okay. it, it doesn't need its own runtime. It's just Python. The the core of Docker is actually let me give you this slide, which is it the the core of Docker is actually in the engine. So uh, the SDK is just a thin wrapper that calls the Graph API API. So as long as this is running, you can connect to it using any language, any framework. Any uh, environment. See, as, as the just the uh, as the Docker file, right? It's but it's wrapped up with the Python code. Shy. Yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> and how how about to implement it to Kubernetes? Uh, in in what way? In uh, like how? Yeah. Uh, we we can. There are actually uh, an open source component for the Docker engine that you can run on on Kubernetes. And I believe the builder is available as well, but I haven't tried yet. It it has its own uh, container runtime, like, and uh, it hosts its own version of build kit inside the engine as well. Uh, I see. Yeah, and in case uh, I have a private repository and how to integrate the Docker to the private uh, registry. Uh, you you can use the. Oh, let, let me show you the the documentation. So, the the container object is what you're gonna be working with the most, and it has this method uh, with registry auth here. Oh, sorry, that's this without. <laughs> uh, with one second here. Here you can uh, obtain your your credentials uh, by whatever means you have. Using Python code or reading from a file, or you know, it's just code. And with the container, you can uh, call this method to add the registry authentication into it. And when when you call the the method publish here, which actually uh, publish the container to the registry, it it will use the the authentication you set earlier. Yeah, thank you. That's awesome.